What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to The Engineer Next Door. Today on the channel, we're gonna get into shop lighting layout and installation. A couple things on the agenda in this series is we're gonna make this a two-part series. In this video, we're gonna do the design, go through a couple definitions, some go through my shop space, and then give a little overview of some typical US garage space examples that you can apply this to if you don't have the same space that I do. And second, we'll get into the uh, installation. I'll show you what equipment I use, some codes, and then just a couple of tips and tricks that I have uh, to make the install go better. All right, y'all, we're going to get into a couple of definitions here. So first one we're going to start with is IES. IES is the Illuminating Engineering Society, and they are kind of the pioneers in America of uh, illumination requirements in how light a room needs to be and we will get into a couple of examples here later in this presentation on what kind of expectations they have for different room types. Um, number two is an IES file. IES file is just a luminaire manufacturing file type containing all the light characteristics of a fixture and so we, we use IES files in order to um, model our fixtures within a light rendering software, which we'll get into a little later as well. And so a couple of uh, names that we need to know here is foot candle and foot candle is the imperial unit of light intensity. And then lux is the metric unit of light intensity. And the one definition that Everybody probably knows just going from Home Depot to Lowe's is lumens. And lumens is just a measure of visible light emitted by a source. Um, so from this infographic down below here, um, this is what a foot candle represents. So back in the day, we used to get light from candles. And so they made the standard based off of one candle. And so as you can see, uh, our candle is our light source which is one foot away from a one foot by one foot square, and that gives a one foot cancel light intensity. Um, same thing with Lux, but this is a um, candle, same um, unit, which is lumens, but then you're just one meter away through a one meter by one meter square, and that gives you um, one Lux. And so, Couple conversions down here is one foot candle equals roughly about 10.7 lux. So just keep that in mind um, when you're looking at some conversions. So now on to the exciting stuff. So here is a picture of my existing shop space. And as you can see, uh, we just have two lights illuminating this space right now, just an eight foot fluorescent, and then also just a four foot shop light from Costco. Um, Needless to say, this space doesn't have very great illumination for what I like to do in this space. So, you know, uh, car repairs, woodworking, and then just some general construction projects. And so we need to fix that by putting in some new lights and making this space a little bit brighter. All right, so here's the existing floor plan of the shop. And so as you can see, we got a 23 by 41 space, and this rectangle right here is our primary shop space. And so before I start any sort of lighting project, what I like to do, and I can't reiterate this enough, is measure your space. So measure your space, draw it out, and it will be just much easier to see when you are uh, planning out your fixtures. And so. Um, this is my existing setup. Uh, we got two um, switch locations, one for this 16 foot bay and then one for this 18 foot bay. And so what we're going to do in this project is there's a receptacle right on the bottom of the uh, beam there that we're going to get power from and we're going to put the new switch that we're going to buy in this space right about here. And so what we're gonna do is take power from this receptacle, move this to a junction box, hopefully the whole way down to the switch, but I'm not sure I have enough existing wire, but 
Um, ultimately, I don't want to run a brand new circuit to here just because wire is expensive right now. So we're going to reuse this existing power feed and get power to our uh, new switch here. So um, that kind of wraps up the existing layout as you can see up here. Um, we got everything assembled out and so just stop and pause if you uh, want to look at the existing install and we'll hop on to the next uh, new layout all right getting into the new layout here first things first i want to start with the existing um, height of my space and so i have a typical gable roof and so the north and south side of my um, shop here is about 12 foot up in the air and then the middle height is about 14 foot in the air and so what I was shooting for is the fixtures to be mounted at 13 foot 3 and I determined that by using a lighting software called AGI 32 that you can download and we'll get into that a little bit later here on the next slide um, of what kind of calculations you can do with that software um, so getting into that real quick is here is the new j box we were talking about on the existing um, layout that got relocated and so we're going to get power um, our unswitched hot from this j box and then route it over to our new switch and so this new switch is actually going to be zero to 10 volt dimming compatible because we are going to use 0 to 10 volt dimming which is a commercial type of dimming um, for our shop space um, there's a couple types of dimming um, most familiar with is going to be phase dimming and 0 to 10 volt dimming is just a commercial form of dimming um, those are the two kind of forms of dimming that you're going to find at Home Depot and especially for high bays, uh, zero to 10 volt is kind of the standard for um, your, your light commercial fixtures. And so, uh, as you can see on this red um, wire, this is a new type of Romex that actually has the zero to 10 volt wires built into it. And we'll get into that um, on the next series of what kind of uh, Romex we use. But ultimately, you uh, just route new power to this switch, and then you do um, your 0 to 10 volt dimming out uh, alongside with your, your power circuit. And so instead of having three wires, you have five wires. And so it's really not that difficult if you can um, wire up a typical outlet, you can wire up your, uh, your fixtures pretty easily. So um, now getting into spacing a little bit. Um, ultimately, I went with about a 10 foot nine spacing in between the two fixtures on kind of the larger portion of my um, fix or shop space, and then also about nine foot nine. And really, what I did was I put these in the middle of kind of the two bays that we have because we have a uh, truss that goes in the middle of both of these columns here so i kind of just split the difference to see what made sense and that's the spacing i came up with um, typical kind of shop space in america you're not going to have too many um, shops that are above 12 foot and so uh, for a 15,000 lumen fixture you could get away with you know this 10 foot to 15 foot spacing in between all your fixtures and be perfectly fine so um, now that we've got all of our new parameters set up here uh, let's get into the agi model all right y'all so here is our agi 32 model floor plan and so agi 32 is a light rendering software and so it helps you um, calculate the light foot candle levels within your space um, just based off of the fixture that you're using and is kind of the industry standard for uh, calculating light levels and 
anybody can use this software. All you got to do is go to their website and download a 30 day free trial and uh, just make sure you run these um, calculations within the 30 days. Otherwise, you're going to run out of uh, time. So once you have the software downloaded, this is where drawing out your space is going to be super critical and maybe I'll get into another video of how to use AGI 32. But for sake of time, we're going to skip over how I got to this spot and um, we'll get into that into a different video. And so these points that are on the floor plan here, so say like this uh, 85.8 that is the amount of foot candles that I have placed on the floor right now. And so what I have modeled here is eight 15,000 lumen uh, high bay fixtures. And so what I did was I went to Lowe's.com, found the Lithonia high bay fixtures that are sitting in the aisle right now. And you go and find their IES file on the manufacturer's website. So once you find the IES file on the manufacturer's website, you load it into AGI 32, and then you'll model in um, your fixtures within the space, and you'll create a background. And you know, pretty easy. You can create a square uh, with a certain height, and then you have your floor space. And that's kind of what I did here. And so these black boxes are actually what's modeled in AGI 32 and the pink boxes are what I had originally what I thought my spaces was space um, fixture spacing was going to be but ultimately I ended up uh, moving them and so that's the beauty of uh, putting it in a light software is you can manipulate it and see how it turns out and so um, this ISO line level here uh, each one of these colors represents how many foot candles you have um, around your space. And so let's take this pink one. So within this pink line, if we follow this all the way around, there's 60 foot candles minimum um, within this pink line. And so same with the blue line, you got 70 foot candles minimum within this blue line. And so now, you know, when you get to the center, because it's, uh, you know, accumulation of all the fixtures, you're at your highest intensity point at 92.4 foot candles within this space. And, you know, what is a foot candle? Like, what is a measurement um, that you can relate this to? Um, typically, like in your home, uh, 10 foot candles is about what your living room is going to be when you have, you know, a couple lamps um, turned on and, you know, maybe an overhand fan light. And so in a shop space, you're going to have more light because, you, you know, you're doing high detailed work. And I am of the opinion that the more light, the better, because you can't have more lumens, but you can put a dimmer on it and make less lumens. And so... I probably could have got away with like a 12,000 lumen fixture, high bay fixture, but I just wanted the 15,000 lumen because it was uh, about the same price for uh, more lumens. And um, kind of energy consumption wise, each one of these fixtures is um, about 100 watts. And for comparison, a little fluorescent um, lamp bulb that you're used to those used to be 60 watts each so times that by two is 120 watts and each one of those fluorescent bulbs put out about 600 to 800 lumens and so now this one fixture replaces two filament bulbs with almost 15,000 or 15 times the amount of uh, lumens produced and so that's just um, shows why LED really is just inferior to fluorescent at this point um, and so yeah this is kind of the uh, final foot candle layout that I came up with and we'll get into a 
couple renderings here and the IES recommendation for what a shop space foot candle should be. All right, coming full circle here. This is the IES recommended uh, foot candle table that they have on their website. I'll leave, uh, leave a link in the description below so you can see the full list. But these are the three kind of categories I was shooting for um, when designing this. And that is a garage motor vehicles with uh, a repair area. And that's about 50 to 100 foot candles. And remember um, the blue line on our ISO uh, our blue ISO line on our AGI model was about 60 foot candles all the way in our space. So that's well within the 50 to 100. Um, kind of same thing on machine shops. I was shooting for the medium bench, rough grinding, buffing. It's also 50 to 100 foot candles. And then in this woodworking, uh, fine bench and machine work, sanding, finishing, also in the 50 to 100. So, um, just kind of depends on what you're working on, but you don't have to follow this exactly. It's really just how much light you would like in your space, but this is all just a good go by to go after. And just wanted to show a little snip of what the 3D model rendering looked like in AGI 32 with the uh, lights modeled in. And then also here's our shop space. And so this is what your render is going to turn out to be um, in AGI 32. All right, now moving on from a shop space to a standard U.S. garage in America. So standard U.S. garage size for a two-car garage is about a 24 by 24 dimension with an 18-foot door and an 8-foot ceiling height. And so you're not going to put a 15,000 lumen fixture on an 8-foot ceiling just because you would get blinded real easily. And so you also don't need 15,000 lumens when your fixture is only eight feet up in the air. So here's a couple of layouts that I've put together. Um, I actually installed this one at my mom's house. Um, just, you know, the typical Costco lights that they have, the little one by four panels, and that illuminated this entire space just perfect. And then also on the right side, Here's another one that we've installed before, and that's um, four eight-foot LED strip lights with 10,000 lumens on them each. So you got 40,000 lumens in this uh, typical garage space, and that was for uh, a guy that did a little bit more detail work on his cars and uh, wanted the space to be illuminated. So I wanted to give you guys a little um, couple examples here, and. We'll get into a couple AGI models of these two just to see what how they related to um, non-high bay lights. So as you can see here, this is the first layout that we have. Um, this is the six one by four panels from Costco um, that are just 4,400 lumens. And just look at uh, the blue ISO line that this represents is you have 30 foot candles. and 30 foot candles is plenty of light when you're talking about just a normal garage space. You know, you park your car in there, um, you know, do the occasional project, and mostly it's a storage space. You don't need, uh, you know, 90 foot candles in a garage space that you don't do anything in, right? And so this is just an example of, uh, you know, how Costco rules the world, right? <laughs> you can buy couple of these fixtures uh, for not a couple hundred bucks and have way more light than what you know sometimes these uh, contractors are putting two uh, lamp holder lights in and um, it's really dim in brand new garages so so this is just what the rendering looks like in AGI of the six one by four lights in the garage so this is the second example of a typical U.S. garage. And this is the one with four eight foot, 10,000 lumen strip lights mounted at eight foot. And so as you can see, um, this has a little bit more light than the last example with the six one by fours, um, but it also costs a little bit more. Um, but this individual also worked on cars a little bit more. so had a little bit more fine detail work that they wanted illuminated. And so having that extra um, illumination was 
kind of a re requirement for this garage space. And here is the AGI 32 rendering of the four eight foot strip lights mounted at eight foot. All right, y'all, that's a brief overview of how I designed a lighting layout for a shop space. It's hard to cover everything that goes into a lighting layout in a 20 minute video, but tried my best to hit some key points to allow you to do this yourself. So stay tuned for part two of the actual install of this new lighting layout. Um, last but not least, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like or comment and be much appreciated. And that wraps up part one and we'll see you in the next one.